Here we are, the, the last week of May. Uh, Pastor Brian here, coming together with us all once again for Trinity Lutheran Church in Bismarck, North Dakota, and also touching bases to many of our friends as this little thing has grown a little bit. People have shared this with their friends. So, um, and to Ashley, North Dakota, to Williston, North Dakota, um, uh, Driscoll, North Dakota, Mandan, North Dakota. So some of this is going around. And then, of course, even as we mentioned, some of our friends who have shared this to South Dakota, now to Montana. Uh, so a little bit of sharing, which is always nice to say. Well, bless us. And so grace and peace to you. Bless us, O Lord, for the gift of your word, O Christ. The gift, uh, the, the holy and divine word that would come into our heart to lift us up and give us peace. Amen. So, um, uh, the study now for this coming Sunday, the last Sunday of May, is the, the opening of the story of Pentecost, which will be in Acts chapter 2. Uh, the, the writer of Acts uh, continues with this story of Luke uh, writing to Theophilus, and uh, explaining this phenomenal, amazing story. So it's Acts chapter 2, and the Holy Spirit arrives. So Christ has been lifted up. We have had ascension. And, um, and as Jesus gives to us the message, wait in my... Uh, um, the Holy Spirit will come. The Advocate will come. It's what the word I was trying to remember. The advocate will be coming to you to will uh, open this up and explain this all and make it um, so aware to you. And uh, so it's Acts chapter 2. Now, you know, I remember as a kid, you know, asking this question. So what, what is Pentecost and why is this a thing? And my mother would try to explain this to me. And, and uh, she also said that this is the birthday of the church. Well, when I'm a child, I don't really understand that. I certainly understand birthdays, but uh, so we try to put this together for what the birthday of the church is all about. And and uh, if you have a map in your Bible, as as I do, that that shows and lists all of the places from all around the region that uh, that people have come, as it will mention here in the to the text, um, and then. You know, as we probably remember, grandmas and grandpas telling stories of how church, they would go to church and church would be covered in their native language in Russian or German or Swedish, Danish, Finnish. Um, you know, these great Norwegian preachers that were hold on. And then when in the Great Migration, when they came to the United States, uh, as they would hold on to the, these original languages, uh, the Norwegian Lutheran Church and all, and this this uh, um, corner in uh, North St. Paul, where there are three Lutheran churches on three separate corners: a Norwegian Lutheran Church, a German Lutheran Church, and a Swedish Lutheran Church. And in those days years ago, uh, they would all have their services in their own languages. Now, okay, um, I mean, to think about that, which would probably be very comforting for people who spoke those languages, but if you did not speak those languages, you would not be welcome. Uh, it would be very foreign to you. Uh, you would not understand it. It would be a completely different language, which is part of what this story of Pentecost comes about. And so let us begin. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. 
all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. And so again, um, to speak in tongues, you know, but listening to people from another country, another language, they might as well. You have no idea what people are talking about. And in our Lutheran tradition, um, we don't go into this uh, gift of the Spirit very often, uh, and in some ways it can be a little intimidating uh, that we're not exactly sure what and how it is, rather, in, in our other Christian, um, Christian denominations, then that is a very, very common. Now, and to sit around, if we were all sitting around, I'm sure you may have had stories of listening or your experience of what that must have been like the first time you have ever uh, been part of or seen anybody uh, experience what speaking in tongues can look like. And it can be kind of a strange experience uh, if you're not prepared for it. So um, anyway, it's just out there, but something that we could have a, a wonderful, wonderful um, conversation about. Now the interesting thing is, is that sort of it, it, it becomes this joke you see in verse 13. However, some made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. So as we move into now Peter, I want to uh, pause right there because what Peter is saying is absolutely incredible. It's absolutely beautiful. But it is not so very long ago um, of, for Peter, certainly in Peter's day in life, um, when Peter in Luke chapter 22 Verse 54, in the trial, when Peter disowns Jesus. After seizing Jesus, they led him away and took him to the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, this man was with him, but he denied it. Woman, I do not know him, he said. A little while later, someone else saw him and said, You are also one of them. Man, I am not, Peter said. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. And Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him before the rooster crows today. You will disown me three times. And he, wet, he went outside and wept bitterly. So you see, uh, from that moment, uh, at the crucifixion of Christ, and the denial, and Peter, who repeatedly will put his mouth in it and, and say the wrong thing, and I mean, Peter, just this, this amazing story of who this man is, now, at this time, at the resurrection of Christ and the return of Christ, the ascension of Christ, the, the, the conversion is, is what is so astonishing for Peter as he stands up. Now, here we go back to Acts chapter 14. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk. Ha ha ha. Small joke, as you suppose. It's only time. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. No. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. I will pour out my spirit on all people. And so Peter now quotes, because this, I mean, this quite a section. And this comes in the Old Testament, Joel chapter 2. Uh, 
Um, oh gosh, uh, you could probably even begin in verse 18 uh, and, and all the way to, uh, um, to verse 32. Um, the Lord's answer to this, and, and th th this is a great section of uh, the, 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 he's a minor prophet, Joel chapter 2, um, the Lord's answer to this. Um, but then this is what Peter quotes, this, this portion of this, which, which is evident of Peter's depth of knowledge and the studies that he has done this. And I mean, here Peter is imploring in Pentecost. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs. And so, you see, this is absolutely um, uh, really the amazing story of coming together now. And so the application of this Bible study, the application of Pentecost is when the Holy Spirit has touched your heart. What will you say? How will you say this? Because perhaps you have already done that. And you have asked and you have stated to, some, to say someone, I have Christ in my heart. And what do they say to you? Well, good for you. Uh, that's nice. You know, uh, I have Buddha in my heart. I, you know, I have whatever. Um, or they'll just say, well, good for you, uh, live long and prosper. They'll you know, say something uh, silly like that. Um, see, the question now becomes, how are you going to now gain this depth of expression of what has happened in your life, this exposure um, to the Holy Spirit, to this emerging faith that has come to you, this is the birthday of the church thus, and it's not some ancient church because the church is within you. You are the church. And so your Pentecost becomes the birthday of you and your beginning, your, your arrival at new faith and new hope and new joy. And we lift this up this Sunday of Pentecost. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.